Nearly six weeks ago, New York State implemented a revolutionary bail reform system that aimed at lowering the number of people in jail. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo had this to say about the reform. On bail reform, uh, the old system was too reliant on cash, right? The old system was if you were rich and you could pay bail, you get out. If you're poor and you couldn't pay ba bail, you went to jail. It was never supposed to be about money, right? The whole justice system is not supposed to be about who's rich, who's poor. Well, now state Democrats are split on how to move forward with several groups pushing to roll the new law back and limit the change. For more on this, we have reporter from the city, Ravain Blau. So, Ravain, walk me through this. What are these bail reform laws and why are they so monumental? So in January 1st, New York enacted uh, new sweeping sort of reforms, and that included essentially releasing all people convicted uh, or charged with misdemeanor offenses and all almost all nonviolent felony offenses as well, and excluding a few uh, cases such as uh, you know uh, witness intimidation or domestic uh, uh, the violence cases. But essentially, it, it allowed for the release of uh, thousands more people before they're facing their actual criminal charges. And so, you know, why is this uh, is this so controversial among Democrats? We, we see Democrats pushing to roll back this plan after it was already approved by lawmakers. Can you walk me through why that would be the case? Absolutely. So there's been a few really high profile cases regarding uh, people who were let out, many of them who are really mentally ill and then right away committed new crimes. And again, were let out again and then committed new crimes uh, again. So uh, many lawmakers are saying, hey, look, we need to change this and we need to make sure that these people are away um, before they're actually facing their trials. The advocates are saying, hey, look, this is the system that uh, allows people to be free and actually these people who are mentally ill need help aside from being thrown into jail and that throwing them into jail at Rikers Island is not the solution. So they're saying to, to reconsider, roll back some of these policies, uh, some of these sweeping changes, but uh, what do they have in place as a suggestion, you know, as a backup? Do they have, is there any kind of backup plan? Yeah, they really cite uh, the New Jersey system, which was enacted about three years ago, which uh, eliminated bail completely, but relied on uh, some type of algorithm and also gave judges some discretion in cases where they could look at the person's history and say, hey, look, this is somebody who might commit new crimes based on uh, what they've done in the past or as a kind of a threat to society. And based on that, we can say, hey, look, we're gonna hold this person until the criminal case uh, comes up. And so those who are uh, supporting this this law, they say that rolling it back may hurt people of color at a disproportional rate. For our viewers who may not be as familiar with bail reform in general, can you explain why, why there is that concern? Sure. I mean, history has shown, especially in New York City, that when the judges have discretion, people of color are uh, unfairly treated uh, in relation to other, other defendants. And, uh, you know, it's not necessarily done on purpose, but the judges have that kind of leaning bias. And they're saying, look, the history has shown that, and because of that history, we cannot give the judges this discretion at all. Like, we've, they've had their opportunity, we, they've shown that they can't be trusted, and we want to take that out of their hands completely. Uh, and that the system, you know, is failed, that the system previously was flawed, and that we need to stick to our guns, and it's only been a month, and you can't make any, you know, large sort of prominent, uh, you know, decisions based on just a month worth of data and cases. Yeah, certainly. I, I was reading a, an op-ed in the New York Times that was advocating for that long-term wait and see. We, we can't be rash to rush to another decision. But so back to the probability of this being rolled back. How likely is it that this law gets reversed? And then what happens? So there really is now a rift in the two state houses in Albany. One of them, the state senate is saying, hey, look, we should you know, kind of consider rolling it back and creating the New Jersey system or something similar. And the state assembly is saying, look, we are not changing. We are, th we have gone too far. We made these changes already and we want to, you know, stick, stick it out and see how it's going to play out uh, over a longer set of time. So, I mean, I think it really depends. There's been really, the tabloids, especially in New York City, have really highlighted some problematic cases. And instead of focusing on the lack of resources for a mentally ill, they've really focused in on the idea that these people are being let out. Like one of the cases that they highlighted was somebody who had been in and out of the system over a hundred times. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that doesn't actually show or highlight how the actual bail reform, uh, you know, which just started January 1st, isn't necessarily related to that person because this person clearly had gone through the system multiple times and it hadn't worked, right? The person had been in Rikers Island multiple times doesn't actually, it's not the answer, it's not the solution. 
uh, and you know, there's a big movement to kind of add more services for mentally ill as well. Yeah, totally. That's certainly something that needs to be addressed in our country too. Uh, Ravain Blau, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.